There we go. Okay, cool. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nerd Variety. I'm Hannah, and I'm joined today by Josh. Hey. And Hunter. Hey. <laughs> I will not be participating much in this conversation, as I Thank do not have much to say. I know it's a nice change of pace, isn't it? <laughs> this week here. we're this week we're going to be doing a tier list of some of the biggest, most influential, most iconic Avatar: The Last Airbender characters. Yeah. Um, and Hunter doesn't even know how to pronounce their names correctly, so he. I know Aang. That mm. you, 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 you kind of pull out the, the butcher knife on some of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking like the Avatar: The Last Airbender movie pronunciations, like. Ugh really bad he did in fact say soka and i wanted to strangle him what, what um it? it's Sokka. no no yes Sokka. Sokka. what did i say soka i don't want to talk about it anymore it's awful anyway so that's what we're doing today so if you're listening to this on one of our podcast sites you might actually consider switching over to youtube because we're going to have a visual component we're going to be able to actually see this ranking uh, as we create it. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be judging these characters on generally three things. Uh, first of all, just their skill in battle, who would beat who in a fight. We can talk about their feats, right? So any important moments that they've had, why either in battle or just in life. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about character presentation and development. So, you know, sometimes we just really like these characters, even if they would not win in a fight. So, for example, you might recognize Cabbage Salesman. My cabbages! Yeah, I thought he was important to have on here. He's very iconic. He would not win in a fight against any of these people, but but no, I I still feel like he should be in here. Yeah, unless um, yeah, there was a drought in the land and they all and he was sitting pretty on top of his cabbages. Grow right I mean, true. Other, That's true. How can he grow cabbages if there's a drought? Well, he already has cabbages. He has cabbages. On yeah, cabbages. he always has cabbages. Okay, cabbages exactly. for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I want to go ahead and start just by doing what I think is the the most obvious move, and I'm hoping nobody fights with me, which is just I'm just gonna take Iro and put him up here at the very Iroh. tippity top. Who that? So Iroh is, uh, he's the Fire Lord's brother, and he's Zuko's uncle, and he's just this really wise old man uh, who has seen some some stuff in his time and has grown for it, um, and yeah. he also will kick your ass. Yeah, he was first on line to the throne, but he did some shenanigans and things. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, it was given to Ozai. Um, but he could definitely still whip Ozai, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think so. On a, good, on, a, on a good day. Well, and he, he took on, um, he really is like this just man of wisdom. Um, and he's hilarious uh, to boot. But I think part of the reason he would beat Ozai is because, because of all his jokes. No, it's because he oh. learned from all the other types of bending and took from them into his firebending. Uh, and so made sort of this new take new techniques that were better than anything that had been seen before. So he's up there. Do we want to wait for Josh to come back? I was just going to say, is Josh here? Because I don't okay. see him. I just wanted to finish what I was saying so we could do a nice clean edit. <laughs> You're welcome. Who says I'm going to edit? <laughs> Josh, you back? I'm back. I can hear you all. I can't see you yet, but you're back. Okay. Wait, you can see my back? <laughs> I can't see any. Oh, now I don't see you. Okay. 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 Are we ready to resume? Yes. Iroh. Okay. Yeah. So that's Iroh. Uh, since we're talking about him, we might as well decide where to put Ozai. Um, mm. So he's kind of a, an enigma because he's clearly very powerful, but he. He yes. really sucks. Like, he sucks a lot. Yeah. He's, he's the worst. Um, so do we put him in the worst category? Uh, he's got to go up there. He's got to be a little higher because he, he causes so much. He is kind of, he kind of 
sets in motion things for Zuko and Zuko's life, mm-hmm. and he was the final test for Aang. So right. right. Well, so what are you? What are you exactly ranking them on? Is it just like? their prowess as a fighter or a bender it's a whatever, combination or? of things so it's their prowess oh, as a fighter or a bender it's it's how much how we like them i feel like definitely factors in um but but like i definitely understand where josh is coming from where like ozai holds a really important role in in the story right and That's you have to appreciate a good villain even if you hate them yeah, so again, like, yeah. that is another question. Like, are you considering for a tier ranking how good they are at in their role? Like, mm. are they, and are they an important character? Like, because I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily consider that in terms of tier ranking. Mm-hmm. I would more be leaning towards, like, uh, their abilities and their knowledge and everything. There's a lot that we're taking into consideration here because I, I felt like just looking at one aspect of these characters wouldn't do them justice. But I, yeah. I still don't... don't... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, we, we don't see too much of Ozai bending outside of the comet. We know he mm-hmm. burns Zuko. We know he shoot lightning. Yeah. Um, we know he's probably a you know, pretty good fighter outside of, you know, on any day of the week. Um, and he really, like, showed his, like, skill when he was uh when he was com- enhanced by the comet um mm-hmm. and then but we only see him see it we actually only see his face in season three right well and because of that and because like he's clearly a very powerful bender um but he doesn't really have any defining moments he's he's a very important character but not a very interesting character i refuse to put him any higher than a b no no yeah definitely not he's <laughs> i'd maybe give him a c yeah, I'm in that like I BC mean, zone, and we can always change this if we if we decide otherwise. But I think he's say, gonna uh, go there. Let's say, let's say D, actually. You're gonna say D? Yeah, okay. just because he's kind of he's kind of the, the, the threat in the background, but it's more of and he but he, you know, he doesn't he only he kind of yeah, yeah for right now let's put him in D. <laughs> we'll put him no, there. We'll put him there. So if he's a D. I want to know who you would put as F. Is there anyone who's a worse character in any aspect? What about Cabbage Man? No, Cabbage Man is great. Yeah, but like you said, he's no, kind no. of crap Cabbage for Man fighting. Did, no, he's great. Uh, no, I don't know. Come on. Yes. Evil Cabbage Man. Put him in C for cabbage. <laughs> I we're doing it. That's where he goes. It has been decided. So that's that's your that's your ranking system. You're yep. gonna put him under C <laughs> for cabbage. You got yep. it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Put Cora under K. Cora's not on here. You don't have a K. Whatever. Oh, Katara's on here and her name starts with K, but Yeah, I thought that was Cora, the fourth from the left. That's Katara. Who's Cora? <laughs> All waterbenders look alike to you, don't they? Yeah. Gosh, Hunter. Jeez. It's 2019. What's wrong, what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Check yourself. There's a lot wrong with me, especially in 2019. Anyway, the only character I feel like I could put in as an F rank would be May. Yeah, May is kind of a, a blimp. Um, <laughs> a blimp? A blimp. Excuse me. Excuse my French. A blimp. Um, a blip. Okay, that makes way more sense than a blimp. Yeah, she got yeah. erased from existence by Thanos. Kind of. You never hear anything about her after uh, the last season. And even the comics, which uh, you, which they don't really pay much attention to nowadays, but in the uh, Avatar comics, she um, she and Zuko broke up. I don't know if they ever got, if they're planning to get them back together, but I mean, she's the boss with knives, and it was nice for Zuko to have, you know, someone he could connect with, but... Yeah, I understand, uh, like, she does have a, a, I would say a semi-important role, um, and she does have her fantastic moment where she is being threatened by Azula, and she's like, I love Zuko more than I'm scared of you, and we're all like, yeah, May, that's right. Finally. But otherwise, (laughs) she's just, like, she's really cool in battle, but otherwise, she's just kind of a meh character. 
Yeah. Which yeah. is so kind of like, the wow, point. She rounds, out, she rounds out the trio of all. Yeah. Of Azul and her uh, minions. And her, yeah. And her crew. She kind of reminds me of, of like Raven from Teen Titans, but without yeah. any character yeah. development. Or strong power powers <laughs> i mean really she's a badass strong. with those knives she's definitely got a got a nick got some strong um amazing ninja ninja skills but yeah other than that other than what we talked about she's not really high up there so you think we're putting her in f yeah and you know her she might she could go to up, up one but we'll see for now we'll see we'll see we'll make our final rankings later uh so let's see on the completely contrasting side what about ty lee ty lee hmm i love ty lee so, but she's great <laughs> she's great she's adorable. and kind of ridiculously powerful when you think about it yeah yeah think about how and think about how like she was she was brought in season in season two uh book 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 two, book two excuse me mm-hmm. and you see i just remember watching the show on tv and that scene and they they're they're like hyping the, the drill episode which i just watched last night again and it was, i was like whoa how did that how did she do all how did she do that with those mm-hmm. cards what what's what, what is she and uh that and cheat blocking comes back in legend of Korra in a major right. way right 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 yeah, so just in terms of power, I mean, with her ability to to temporarily, albeit, take away someone's bending, I feel like that yeah, immediately her, puts her, her on the team. top half of our tier list. Hunter, do you have any comment on that? <laughs> we lost Josh again. No comment. No comment. I, yeah, I'm not even really doing video mostly. I <laughs> noticed that. Yeah. Are you just like so I'm bored? Like, yeah, I, I I have no idea what you guys are talking about. This is like <laughs> if I went on. This is I'm sure how you guys would feel if I went on a whole episode about uh, World of Warcraft or just mm-hmm. Warcraft characters. Now I could do a whole thing for that too. I would love that. There's so many of these things. I'm sure you can appreciate though what it means for a character to be able to take away someone's ability to bend. Sure, that's like if Bender couldn't bend. Right. So you don't even know who Bender is. Yeah. I know who Bender is. Who's Bender? I don't want to talk about it. Oh my god, you're the worst. But <laughs> Tylee can punch people strategically. She has this really amazing knowledge of human anatomy and so she can block their chi and essentially make them incapable of fighting, which is yeah, like she's not a super powerful offensive character, I guess. Um, she doesn't do a lot of damage, but Best she... Best offense is a good defense. I, I mean, essentially, yeah. Yeah, she's surprising, because uh, no one, like I said, no one knew who or what she was doing, so I was like, oh, she's an acrobatic mm-hmm. and kind of disarming, uh, yeah. how she looks, and then she she gets in, she, you know, she got, she, you know, her yeah. floor, whatever what happened. <laughs> I feel like in terms of characters, she's a little one note. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, how so I would... that note? I mean, it's a good note, but but it's just one of them. Um, nice gong ring. Nice ring the gong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say maybe put her in as like an A or B. Just because she's so powerful. Or in a really unconventional B way. B or C. <laughs> B would be good. Thinking B. I was thinking B as well. All right, let's put her up there. You just really don't want to put any two together yet, do you? I mean, we can, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we will. No, yeah, we have to. We have thirteen characters, only six. Yeah, no, I mean after. Yeah. After. Well, here we have to put Aang in A because his name starts with A. Same thing his with Ara. Starts, his name starts with two A's. I know, I know. There's no like double A rank though. Or, I mean, a N A. Okay. Anyway, where are we gonna put Aang? Because he's he's the Avatar. He's like super powerful and all that. Would it not um, just automatically be S? S for super. <laughs> but we're taking into account some other aspects as well. And honestly... Like, he's a great character, then. Honestly, yeah. I don't know if he could beat Iroh in a fight. Well, he's got all... Well, Can you imagine? What, 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 what are the parameters of the fight? Does he have everything that he is... Which, which are we talking about here? Which 
book of anger. Well, I'm saying it's like, like yeah, like at the end of the day, I, I guess at the end of book three, if they got into a fight, who would win? Oh, Aang, hands down. You think so? Yeah, he's got, he's mastered the Avatar state and all four bending arts. He's so mastered he the Avatar state and all four bending things, but he's still only like 14. Right, right. But still, and Iroh has like, years of like strategy and experience. But Aang's also yeah. a great character, right? And which is something you said you're including in considerations. Well, we were just talking about versus Matt versus um, Bindi. Yeah, skills. well, you're also talking about where to place him. But as far as character develop, the character, I mean, he is the central character of the first uh, mm-hmm. series, and he brings a lot to to the show, to the show, or to the to the world as the last Airbender, the last mm-hmm. Air Nomad. He still carries the culture and the philosophy and his decision not to kill is kind of a game changer because mm-hmm. you know on this sh- on in this war that you're fighting you gotta kill somebody supposedly right and and spoilers for hunter and anybody else um no, you know, at, the, no at the end <laughs> you know he makes that decision to to stay true to his pacifism which which is definitely a very defining moment for him I feel like I still feel like he's not the most interesting character, though. It's not about if he's the most interesting. It's about if I feel he's interesting like, enough to be on S. I feel like Zuko, Zuko's character development and role in all of this might be better or bigger. His well, character development is definitely. <laughs> then put him at A. We can put A to A for now. Okay, we're gonna put A at A. A, 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 A. Okay. Okay, that was a very well constructed sentence, Hannah. Thank you. All right. How about Zuko? Zuko, friend Zuko. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He he's up there between S and A. Yeah, I was thinking the same. He, after, after watching, I watched the Blue Spirit last night. I watched Zuko alone, which told his backstory. Um, and it was, it was like, this, this kid had a rough life, and yeah. he, he was, he's pretty, he's pretty OP with being able to manage himself, like, sneaking into a, a Fire Nation base, freeing Aang, getting out with him almost, on un, 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 until, you know, Zao decided to be a little, little That's, that's something I hadn't considered. He's gone again, so we're gonna wait. Every time he leaves, does our 40 minutes start over? Uh, I doubt it. Because <laughs> it's me hosting. So. Gotcha. And with and then in the episode of the uh, did you even notice alone, I don't know. Josh, did you notice that you disappeared? Did I? Yeah, you did. I totally did. Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, in the episode of Zuko alone, he uh, is on his own. He's on his own and you see him you know single handling taking down like earth nation soldiers while you know really tired and weary and kind of in a weird emotional state mm-hmm. uh and then he ends up using his heart bending along with his sword so he's very and and then he at the end of the series at the end of uh, the main series he is fighting toe-to-toe with his duel with someone who, who he's never been able to match so he definitely shows his his skill as a fighter yeah for sure He's gone again. God, this is why he needs a better <laughs> connection. He just needs yep. better everything. He's the weakest link, technically, mm-hmm. from a yep. technical standpoint. Yep. I think you should put the person in blue in the B or the A. This guy? Because, yeah. Why? Because it's blue and A is blue. <sighs> Josh, you back with us? Yes. Okay. Kind I'm gonna of. I'm gonna I'm gonna resume then. Um I think something that you, you kinda hinted at I don't know. We'll figure it out in the recording, but um This is the recording. 
We'll figure it out when we year. look at the recording. All right, whatever. Just keep going. Um, one thing that you kind of mentioned that I hadn't really considered in comparing Zuko and Aang is Aang's obviously a really, really good bender, but Zuko's got yeah. a lot of other stuff going for him. Like, he's very stealthy, he's very good with a sword, and and I feel like they would be very, very good sparring partners. I feel like Aang would probably win, but Zuko would put up a heck of a fight. But my heart wants to put him up there with Iroh. I don't know. We'll put him there for now. I love Zuko. I love him so much. Zuko is good. I, I like I like how they gave him a kind of a Darth Vader, you know, arc in the, mm-hmm. in the series. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, he 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 shows himself with the kind of you know the underdog, uh, which you don't notice until season until uh, season two. Mm-hmm. He ends in season one, but then you see. To that he's actually the underdog and he's been trying to fight his way up for a reason. Josh. Oh my god. It's gonna be a mess. Yeah, it is. I'm not editing around this too. I'm keeping it straightforward. <laughs> just as is. All right. I'm about to do something pretty controversial. Josh, are you back with us? Yes. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Okay. <gasps> How could you? I know, I know. But I, got, I was thinking about Ira, or not Ira, um, Ozai, and why he's, like, not not that big a deal. And it's because of Azula, right? Like, Who she's that? clearly super powerful. Um, Azula is Zuko's sister, um, who essentially spends the whole time trying to... to just kill everyone. I think I remember her. I think I do remember her, actually. What'd you say, Josh? Sociopath. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think the reason that I'm like, meh about Ozai is because Azula came out, and she really, I would say, is is more of, like, the main antagonist of the show. Like, she's constantly chasing them and pushing back at every point, and she's very powerful. And she has, like, I, don't, I mean, I guess you could almost call it like a reverse character development arc, right? Because yeah. she becomes so obsessed with her need to to find the Avatar and kill him and, and all this stuff that she like sort of slowly goes insane. Yeah, which is which is really cool to see at the end because, oh, she's not this, you know, yeah. this tyrant, this person who can do basically whatever she wants. You know, she's actually got, she's actually start seeing her like, crumble a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. And at the end, it's, it, it's, it's, it's sad, but it's, you see, yeah. it's okay. He was crazy. <laughs> I feel like you could change major aspects of Ozai's personality and not change the show that much. But if you change anything about Azula, like you're making yeah. drastic changes to what's going on. Like she's such an integral character uh, yeah. to yeah, everything. It gave, it, gave them a, it gave them a more pressing need to get things done in season two in book two because mm-hmm. Zuko while he was you know prevalent he would he had a different he had a side that would hold that would that would hold back mm-hmm. uh, Azula doesn't hold back she, no. she is as ruthless as long yeah she she almost has like this force of nature status to her where she's just yeah. like constantly pushing and super powerful and and yeah, like you surviving. can feel it <laughs> when you get into the later season two where everyone's just like so stressed and tired from trying to run away from her. Yeah. So I think she goes up there. I don't, I don't like I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I don't feel like, like it has either. to go up there. I don't like it either. I can't believe you would do such a if we're not talking about how much we like thing. them. And instead talking about how much we value them as a character and how important they are, she has to go up there. She's Why a fantastic character. She is, she is a great character. Okay. All right. That was rather well, brave of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm spitting straight facts here. Yeah. Controversial over here. I know. It's controversial. I also kind of want to put Appa up there. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> I, I've, I've watched the least amount of the show of any of us, and I, I agree with that. Yeah, because well, Appa's great. 
What? You want a sky bison, don't you, Hunter? Who doesn't want a sky bison? Yeah, I'm hungry sometimes. No, no, no. Oh, oh, never mind. That's, never mind. Would also like to point out that Appa is one of the few characters that gets his own episode. <laughs> like, there's an episode all about Appa and Appa being lost. Yeah, well, there's a whole TV show about Aang. Yeah, but Aang doesn't... Aang, okay, Aang has a couple episodes where it's just, like, him by himself doing his thing. But it doesn't really happen often. And the fact that they gave Appa his own episode is, is kind of ridiculous. But it was, a, it was an amazing episode. Yeah, very heartfelt. No uh, dialogue, obviously, but, you know. No. Te- it tears at the heartstrings so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stop leave Appa alone. Leave Appa alone. Please, come on. <laughs> All right, and then we are left with the rest of the the gang. Um, uh, don't know where people are gonna go. I say Suki goes in B. So I'd say that's fair. Yeah, I feel like she does. I feel like she she could match off with Ty Lee pretty well. Yeah. Um, cause they're, neither of them are about brute strength. They're both more about strategy and fighting. Um, yeah. she's definitely a good character to have around. Um, I'm trying to think of like any of her like defining moments. Uh, her, um, let's see the first, in the first season when her first, the first episode she was in, she kind of taught Sok taught Sokka how to fight, you know, more effectively. I think she actually right. taught him how to fight. And she kind of showed this, you know, this kind of this. She was kind of carrying on legacy of Kyoshi. Uh, yeah. And then her coming back and her coming back in the show was was um, it was I, I thought she I thought she died for a second for a second <laughs> season. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was she was a good match for Sokka. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just and hate. She, and she ended up influencing Ty Lee too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I just I just as a. As a female, I'm like, I hate to say that all of her worth is because she was, like, a good partner for Sokka and she helped him. She's also just they a were, badass. Yeah, they were, they were <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She's definitely very cool. I'm gonna put Toph up here. Yeah, yeah. I'm Toph tempted to put awesome. her in S. Yeah, because she, she's very long, she has a lot of long-lasting effects on the series, even in Korra, because yeah, you for sure. Can see her, she has her, she has her own little arc in mm-hmm. uh, book form, Korra, and right. she's still the same. But she's she, ha- but you see, she has matured a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. and she has a lot of worldly. She's definitely, I think, she's definitely more spiritual than she was in when she was a kid, which is that was something for sure. which is nice to see. Yeah, I also just feel like. Last yeah, I also feel like in terms of representation, she's really cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, the fact that you have a watching, blind character who's definitely one of the most powerful people on this list. Yeah, I watched the. Bl- <laughs> You're so <sighs> annoyed. <laughs> well, aren't you? Uh, I'm not. And, yeah, I was really thinking, what is this doing to our time? <laughs> I have no idea. I, according to my calculations, we've been here in about thirty minutes. Ah, there we go. Cool. Anyway, yeah, it's tough. Uh, the Washington Blind Bandit. They were the, the, the creators of the show were very impressed with uh, how she turned out, uh, especially when she ends up fighting all of the the, the uh, pro vendors uh, in the mm-hmm. rest, in the ring and beats them mm-hmm. all in like. In like two minutes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, correct me if I'm. Mm, so I guess. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I want to put her in S rank because she and Iroh were the only ones who, like, really kind of pioneered their own form of bending. Right, right. Zuko, right uh, so Iroh, Iroh had a couple was... signature moves. Mm-hmm. Right. He, he, he does have a big connection to the. To the world, to the kind of the bending origins, kind of Papa, Papa does. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was connected with the dragons who were the first firebenders, and uh, Abba was, the Advices were the first uh, airbenders. Tofka was connected to the badger moles who were mm-hmm. the first airbenders. 
Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be mad if she was up there in S rank. <clears throat> Who do you think would win in a fight, Toph or Azula? Toph. Ooh. <sighs> oh, man, they're both. They, they will both be pretty ruthless. I feel um, like I feel like Azula is more about just like brute strength and like a bombardment of of stuff, but I feel like. Toph is more Toph about is like like, sw- like fast, precise movements. Toph is is she's a praying mantis. She waits and listens. Yeah. And with, but she, but if she has to if she has to charge in, she can. You know she can just mm-hmm. you know bring the whole, bring the whole palace <laughs> step down if she wants to. Mm-hmm. And Zula is very she can, she's she's very you know take her time disarming her opponent, but she can do it in a very like the first hit is you know that's a that's a that's a that's that's a bad, that's a bad hit. That's yeah, not, that's gonna down next one even worse. You know, but if we're gonna if we're gonna take into account you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Pokemon type of efficiency or effectiveness, right? It work in this, though. No, but like they they they're based on logic, right? Fire and electricity are not gonna do a lot against a rock. Uh, have you, I've watched the drill episode, and Aang is using uh, earth bending to. To, you know, fight Azula. Yes, he's not a pro at this point, but she's still uh, she still like does like some bad some some strong attacks that ends up breaking through his defenses, and he has to you know you know snap it snap back into it to get to get to start fighting her again. Yeah, she does beat a lot of Earthbenders, uh, you know, by herself more than yeah, more but, experience than Aang. Yeah, but would she beat Toph? Hmm. I don't. Know. I think. I think at the very least, the conversation is is that they're close enough that I think Toph should be up here. Yeah. yeah. She's an amazing character. She's super fun. She definitely has an impact on the story, and she's crazy powerful. Yeah. All right, and then let's see. We're left with the siblings. Uh... I, I'm gonna, okay, I, I just have to ask your opinion about Sokka. Because I mm-hmm. love him so much, so he, I'm going to be a bias. He what do you say? Out the three of them pretty well. The he, Aang, Aang and Tara, he, he helps around. He helps around the mouth, keeps them down mm-hmm. earth. <laughs> uh, and Jack some some pretty. If you say F or D, I'm gonna I'm gonna riot. No, no F. No. No. Oh. If, <laughs> flips. Or D. No, put him in D. Um, B because he does a great job at, at at the whole war side because you know he's he he's wanted to be a general like his dad, like his dad, mm-hmm. fight fighting war. Um, you know, uh, and oh, we lost Josh again. Yep, but it doesn't stop our time. We still only have five minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Yeah. So, I mean, I was kind of thinking that those are like, the, there's like four characters that I really remember from the show. Mm-hmm. And it's the obvious four. It's Aang, Sokka, Katara, and Zuko? Well, uh, I was going with the siblings, uh, Aang, and Appa. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Josh, I actually think recall. it's yeah. I actually think it's really fitting that we put Sokka um, in in a row that so far has been dedicated to non-benders, because like yeah, you feel like he yeah. has a really severe disadvantage, but like clearly with how high we're ranking these ladies, like not being a bender is not the worst thing that can happen to you. No, no. I mean, right. he helps win. The, he helps win the war because of his tactics and his strategy. His best uh, strength is definitely his his brain. Oh yeah. yeah. As he's much seen, as Katara seen. would say, it's not. Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely knows his stuff, and he definitely can, he's really creative. And you have mm-hmm. to be in a world full of benders and ninjas and yeah, crazy hybrid animals. Yeah, he's adapted really well to the fact that he's not special in that way. Right, he's he's done really well for himself. Yeah. All right. More of what happened to him in uh, Dracor, but you know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would have loved that. Yeah, and he definitely has some really amazing character development, and and he's very integral to the story and plays a big role. So I'm I'm happy with him there. And then I think Katara yeah. is going to go up up here. Yeah, S or A for sure. Yeah, she's she is like very she is very powerful, but I don't think she would beat any of these people in a fight. The she does the blood bending though. That's true, but she no, but no, she, she wouldn't. Want to use it. She doesn't want to use it. She doesn't like using it. But I guess she did use it on Azula though, and that's what isn't that what finally brought Azula no, down? She. Uh, well, what am I was, thinking? She, she on a fire was trying to figure out who killed her mother, uh, and that was uh, that was yeah. motive that kind of brought out her dark side. But when she uh, was yeah, fighting yeah. Azula, I, I was surprised why she didn't use it because Azula could. Maybe I'm just saying she should have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't want to I don't think she belongs in S rank. I love her, but but I think she she goes right in there with with Aang and Zuko. They're very evenly matched, I think the three of them. Um and I would love to see a, a battle with those three. Um but I don't think she belongs up there with with Iro and Azula and and Toph. Um we kind of lost him. I know. <laughs> I also think it's funny that I don't know. Wait, I I'm also just thinking about right. like about like love triangles and stuff. Not that they were really love triangles, but there you go. He, the fans wanted a love triangle, but I know, and and, and I did been, too. Been, but you know, and it could have been potential for one because of you know I, I thought that oh I was I was actually kind of wondering like well. Aang is the Avatar. Does I mean I didn't really think about the Avatar, you know, settling down or having you know mm-hmm. being with anybody because he's yeah. the Avatar. And well, and supposedly like he won't always be thirteen. Well, whatever. Supposedly, at some point, they considered putting Zuko and Katara together. I don't know if that was like early in the process or later in the process, but that that didn't happen to some of our they, dismay. They planted some seeds here and there in the in the in, during the. Uh, the, during the, the Avatar, uh, yeah, Air, uh, series, yeah, uh, but you know, of course, it's it it was Aang and Katara. They were they were meant to be. Yeah, all right, if you say so. Anyway, uh, I think this is it. How do you feel about this? Good. Good. I'm glad, Hunter. <laughs> How you feel about it? Uh, yeah. Um. It kind of well, works out. There aren't a lot of characters you just didn't like. Nope. It's a fantastic show. Yeah. yeah no, you I really don't. should watch the rest of it. You really yeah. should watch it. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Well, I think that's I think that's it from us. Uh, you know, you're all anyone who's watching or listening is welcome to disagree, but you're wrong. <laughs> okay. uh, so uh, deal with it. Fine. No, these are just Fine. our opinions. These are just our opinions. These are just our opinions. You're entitled to your own. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd put Sokka, you know, super high up. I, I, I love him so much. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this. So that's it for this week. Uh, next week, what are we doing, Hunter? Uh, next week. So this, this whole discussion has gotten me, gotten me wanting to. Uh, discuss characters that i am familiar with so that i can actually participate so i'm thinking for next week uh we might take a look at ranking some uh batman villains yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. keeping it simple you know to a small group so you don't have to cut it down too much but there there are some uh I, i'm planning on some batman deep, villains I, no, i'm i'm planning on some deep cuts okay well you should probably give us a heads up because i will I might, I, I might I have to do like a little bit of research. You're probably going to have to do the most research. Uh, I expect yeah, Josh I to know more of them. Um, yeah, I play Arkham games. So I watch movies. I so have started games. watching uh, Batman the Animated Series, which I haven't watched before. There you go. But yeah, so that's that. what we got next week. Uh, that'll be a fun discussion, I think. Yeah. So and it'll uh, kick off our Halloweeny, creepy stuff. Yeah, we'll be doing we got a lot while. of characters that are very fitting i think so yeah 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 halloween month is coming up we got mm-hmm. a lot of cool stuff to talk about so it'll be good remember guys to come back next week
Yep. Until then, goodbye. Nerds. Bye. <laughs>